Daredevil might be back, baby. But how does that make you feel? Hey, hey, people. It's your man Z here from Our Reviews Will Kill You. And uh, we're going to check it out. Looks like Disney Plus is talking about bringing back Daredevil. A series is in the works. And uh, Deadline here has an exclusive. So we'll talk about it a little bit and see where everybody feels about this. I, for one, I, I mean, all the clues were there. And I'm a really big fan of Charlie Cox's depiction of Daredevil. I think it's really poignant. I think if you watch the, the Netflix series, I think it's fair to say that there were some really, really good philosophical, like, it was great. Great action, great philosophical points. Uh, it was really interesting to see him tie his Catholicism into, you know, what does redemption mean or what does justice mean? And then his entire dialogue with the Punisher. So we had a great first season. Fantastic. Vincent D'Onofrio knocked it out of the park. Absolutely amazing Wilson Fisk, Fisk as the Kingpin. Just phenomenal. Just can't tell you how big of a fan I am of that performance. And then you have season two with mixed results. It was kind of the tale of two, like uh, a split season, right? You had the first half with uh, The Punisher, which was absolutely phenomenal. You have two characters diametrically opposed on what justice means and, and how they meet it out. You know, Matt Murdock's Catholicism makes it, it's a sin for him to kill, but he really wants to take justice. And does justice mean killing? Where you have the Punisher who thinks everyone needs to die if, they're, if they are in his way. And the power of those scenes are just these two diametrically opposed characters debating each other on the merits of what they're doing, you know, like Punisher basically saying you're ineffective daredevil. Cause you just let these people go. So anyway, really fantastic. Uh, the second half of season two with, um, Electra, not so, I just, I was not that big of a fan of it. I felt like the season lost its way. And then you get season three, which I also thought was very good. I, I thought you saw a different side of Wilson Fisk. I like the idea of his girlfriend who's being seduced by power and then takes, you know, is essentially taking over because he could potentially go to jail. Some really fantastic performances there, too. And I actually thought the depiction of Bullseye was pretty interesting, right? Like a proto Bullseye, right? So here we go. Disney Plus might take it up. And if you are not aware of this channel and the copious amount of rants I've done, I have watched every minute of every episode of all of the Disney Plus series and giving you rants discussing the merits and dismerits of each show. So my biggest concern is you had this really gritty, dark, uh, philosophical, inward thinking show being done and then being turned over to, you know, going from Netflix, which, you know, clearly was kind of an MA rating to having it here at Disney Plus where we've seen the track record and the track record is just not good. Uh, more losses than wins. And I will give you examples of exactly what we're losing, but let's get into the article and we'll talk about it a little bit. So it looks like it's the deal's already been inked and it's gonna be done. And you know, you never know. They could fire these showrunners. They could bring back some other people who, who really knows, but what I do appreciate is Charlie Cox is really into the role, very happy to play the role. Vincent D'Onofrio does a lot of research. Whatever you thought about him in the Hawkeye, and there's a lot of debate whether or not it's the same Wilson Fisk or whatever's going on there. I, I just He's the one who wanted to do the way the outfits were done. Like He's going to the source material. He's studying the character, and I think he's just he, he does a fantastic job, regardless of what the position the script puts him in. But it seems like they've hired Corman and Ord, and they haven't announced anything else formal other than the hiring of these two showrunners. What concerns me, though, is they famously created USA series Covert Affairs, which I did not watch, starred Piper Perabo and Christum, Christopher Gorham. I don't know anything about it. It had five, five, episodes, or five seasons between 2010 and 2014. What have they been doing for the past eight years? I have no idea. And, you know, Daredevil was canceled in 2018, so we're four years removed from that. So 
it seems a little concerning. I don't know that these guys, apparently they worked as executive producers and on NBC dramas, The Enemy Within and The Brave and the CW series, The Containment, which I'm, I would, wouldn't be shocked was canceled. The point is, is these, these guys are network TV people, not the people who are taking risks on the Netflix side, you know, and it's interesting because, you know, we just came off of Moon Knight and the trailer for the She-Hulk dropped, and my lord, are people nervous? Because you, you get a great actor like Oscar Isaac, and he just cannot save the Moon Knight. I, I hate to say it, but it just wasn't good enough for what it was. I mean, I think the Moon Knight was even... The Moon Knight himself was only in about 12 minutes of the entire six hours of the, of the show. Like, that's pathetic. So here we have some real conflicting things going on. Do I really even want Disney taking another stab at Daredevil when we got something that was really good? And obviously I'd love to see the actor continue it, but what are what's the quality of what we're going to get? Are we going to get something that's a joke, that's laughable? I mean, in all honesty, are we going to be able to see anything that resembles this? in our next daredevil are we going to get the sheer brutality and just the this kind of graphic content from a disney plus movie or, or or from a series and for those of you who don't know what's coming next i mean how could you not know i mean you put a man's head in a car door and you just keep slamming what a beautiful beautiful scene Right underneath the Brooklyn, one of the New York, I think it's the Brooklyn Bridge, I could be wrong. I'm not from New York, so correct me if I'm wrong, but did you not think this was a fantastic scene? Were you not excited by the sheer uh, violence that Wilson Fisk's character brought to this? I just, I thought this was stunning. Something to see in a Marvel, I mean, just uh, visceral performance, correct? And what a great character. I miss Wesley. He, I think his name was Wesley. His... <laughs> Wilson Fist's like manservant. What a great character. Totally miss, miss him. What about this? Are we going to get the infamous one shots that you got from season one and season three? Season one had the hallway scene. Season three had the jailbreak scene. And, and you know, these guys really wanted to craft this. They wanted to bring something to the table. They wanted it to be something memorable. Something you weren't going to forget. And who could forget? I mean... I think people still talk about this. The one-shot hallway scene. Just brilliant, beautiful, bold. Nothing like we've ever seen. Are we going to get anything like that? I just don't think so. I really don't. So, my concerns are high. I definitely am, con am concerned here that we're not going to get anything like we saw. I will say that in one of the Loki episodes, they did a one shot. And I think I actually did a rant about this too in one of my Loki rants where I was pointing out how in the Netflix one shot, they did this incredible scene where there's it's, it's just so well done versus the Loki one shot that they tried to pull off that was just so pathetic and mediocre that you just, it, it just it didn't work. I think it was in episode three. I can't remember, but go back in our timeline here. There, I, I have linked all of the Marvel rants. Check out one of the Loki ones. I, I think I pointed out directly exactly what it is. Again, not memorable. Not memorable enough. You don't talk about it. You don't think about it as a Marvel fan. So what are your thoughts? What are you thinking? Do you think that we're in trouble here? Is this a problem for us? I am definitely concerned. I don't think we're going to get the visceral... Um, Netflix series that we wanted. Could Punisher even exist on this platform? I just I just don't see it. I really don't. And John Barenthal's performance as the Punisher, to me, is the quintessential performance. Including Charlie Cox here. I really think that of all the, you know, there haven't been a lot of Daredevil performances, but the man really brought the goods. I mean, seeing him in No Way Home brought such a huge smile to my face. I just, I really loved it. It was really great. I, I would love to see more Spider-Man and daredevil interact the street level here is just it's a beautiful thing so let's see more of it 
But is Disney going to be able to do it right? I just don't have the faith in it. So some good news and some bad news, friends. We're, we might get to see more Charlie Cox, but we might not get what we want. Hard to say. Uh, and I'm not saying that the Netflix thing wasn't flawed. Look, The Defenders, to me, was kind of a failure. Sigourney Weaver, a fantastic actress, but I, I just, they, I don't know what The Defenders was. I liked seeing the four of them interact, but other than that, just the plot, I don't know what was going on there. And Netflix was bloated. They needed good editors. But the Disney thing, is, it, these Disney MCU shows are just, they're a hot mess. I mean, you, at this point, we can't deny it. So that's all you got from me here. Uh, if you like what we do here, like and subscribe. We'd really appreciate it. It helps us grow the channel. We love doing this. So the more you give us feedback, the more likes and shares and all those great things, you help us you help us keep going. And we do have a live full-length audio podcast. Uh, the full-length po uh, podcast, you can get that anywhere. Stitcher, Spotify, iTunes. It's free anywhere you want it. And then if you want to join us, we do live stream it here on YouTube. Uh, it's on Friday night, 7.30 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. Come have some fun with us. It's a really great time for everybody. Uh, you can also catch us Rumble, all those other great places. And uh, as for me, though, I am on to the next one. Thank you.